we've now talked about nonlinear preprocessing to linear models. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration in scikit-learn uh, for uh, using polynomial type features. All right, we're going to go ahead and select our data. So again, we're working with fold uh, with fold zero, and we'll work with the with with the position data again. Remember that uh, M1. Actually, let's go ahead and look at this. In ins ten here, the shape of that is eleven by uh, eleven ninety three by nine sixty. We have nine hundred and sixty features here. If we were to even uh, do a polynomial expansion of degree two with nine hundred and sixty features, we would end up with a very large number. So I'm actually going to cut this number down just a, a bit, so we have something a little bit more feasible. So I'm going to take all the samples, uh, but I'm only going to take the first 100 uh, of the features. Let me execute that, and now if we look at the shape, I'm, I'm down to 100 here. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and create a, a polynomial transform, and very nicely, scikit-learn has a polynomial features class. You can specify what the degree should be. And by including the bias, that means we're not only going to get all of the quadratic terms, but we'll get the linear terms and we'll get the constant term. So there we've uh, created it. And now let's create a new a new set of inputs that are, are our expanded inputs. And actually first, look, let's go ahead and do this in sequence here. So let's go ahead and uh, fit uh, our data. And, and now our, our pol polynomial object understands what the input dimensionality is. And now we can do a transform on that. So ins10 uh, transform uh, is poly dot, uh, pre, uh, transform of ins10. So, so we're doing a transformation of our, uh, our data set here. And now ins10 trans, let's look at what that shape is. We've gone from 100 features now to over 5,000 features. So we've done a really large expansion here. And if we kept our 1,000, this would be a, a tremendous uh, number. I, I, you're welcome to give this a try on your laptops. I, it, your laptop will definitely be stressed if you use all 1,000 of those features. OK, so let's go ahead and build a, our model. We'll use our linear regression model. Our outs 10. OK, so, so in our fitting process, we are taking as, as input our new set of features. And then we have our, our outputs. And now we can ask what the prediction will be. Notice that that did take a, a little while, uh, longer than we've, we've seen linear regression behave uh, to date here. So let's go ahead and pass that same set of features through to make a prediction. And Let's look at the shape of that prediction. Okay, so we're we're back to samples by two columns. So again, our shoulder and our elbow. Okay, we want to look at the result of this prediction process. So here's the code to generate that figure. We've already talked through this. Um, the key difference here is that uh, now outs and pred are both uh, both have two columns, so we're selecting column zero. And that corresponds to our shoulder. Okay, so there's our figure. Um, where's our red curve? 
And the answer is the red curve is actually hiding underneath the, the green curve. Let me go ahead and shift the green curve just a little bit so we can see it. So I'm going to move it by uh, down by 0.1 here. Okay, so so with this new model, we're actually right on the nose as, as far as uh, predicting uh, what the uh, what what the position should be as a function of time, and and that's pretty impressive and exciting. But the thing to keep in mind is that we are uh, doing this with respect to uh, the the training data that's in the training set. So let's let's do our due diligence and look at what happens with with an independent data set. So here's our code for selecting out the data for fold one. And again, we're only taking the, the first hundred uh, features from that data set. And the first stage of this is that we have to pass this INS11 through our polynomial transform. So we have INS11 trans is equal to poly times transform or poly transform ins 11 and then we can make a prediction so there's that two-step process right there our next step is to plot the results that we've uh, pulled out and here's the code to do that. Let me fix my cut and paste errors there. Uh, so, so now here is the answer for uh, for fold one. Keep in mind that I've I've moved the green curve back into its original position. And staring at this, uh, the results are actually quite astounding, uh, or astound astoundingly bad. The the green curve might be capturing the trend of the red curve, but it is actually pretty hard to see. And, and in fact, uh, the performance here is, is even worse than uh, the earlier regression models that we were working with. And, and what that comes down to is the fact that now our input dimensionality to our linear model is uh, over 5,000, which means we have over 5,000 parameters uh, to to solve for, but we only have 1,000 uh, total training set samples. So we're dramatically overfitting uh, our our data in this case, and and that translates into extremely poor performance uh, for for an independent data set. So so we'll what we'll have to do in this scenario is start to add more training data and that's something i invite you to uh, to try out uh, uh, but there are also other techniques that we can uh, start to engage to address this this type of overfitting problem and that's going to be one of our next big subjects here